Good afternoon, everyone. Also from my end and also on behalf of IB Europe and the Programmatic Trading Committee uh, for, for which I'm, I'm sitting here. And also, big thank you, Steffi, for this really kind introduction. Very much appreciated. Although I'm not the vice president of IB Europe, but just of the Programmatic Trading Committee. Um, yeah, it had been a very busy and I think also a very inspiring second day of a wonderful D3Con. I hope you all enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, we're going to put some, some even more inspirations and thoughts, hopefully valuable ones, in your, in your little conference package. Um, so within the next 45 minutes, we will be indeed discussing, as Steffi said, uh, the future of digital ad campaign measurement. Uh, I think we have heard a lot about uh, the targeting piece in this kind of conference, but also indeed the measurement is uh, changing a lot uh, due to the restrictions we heard about. So deep Precation of uh, cookies is going to happen. I just learned a new English word. Um, then we also see growing restrictions um, on, on devices, and of course, the pressure from regulators is also increasing. So we see fundamental changes, not only coming to the targeting piece, but also uh, due to target or due to the targeting. And today we will explore how measurement is affected and well, what, what opportunities lay ahead in front of us to mitigate all these kind of changes and, uh, well, perhaps even provide some better solutions than what we see right now and uh, what we saw in the past. Um, before we start, we also have the opportunity, or you have the opportunity, to ask your questions using Slido. Um, I think you should also see the QR code. Yes, there it is. Um, I have a tablet in here and I will try to do two things. If it fits, I try to put this into the conversation we have, or otherwise we're going to preserve some, I don't know, five to ten minutes to the end, so we can we can also uh, handle and answer your questions which are coming up due to uh, the side of the panel. So, with that, thank you for joining us, and I think we're kicking it off with a round of introduction from my experts. Um, I think we're just starting from one to the other, and if you could just give your name your company and, well, how, how your company, how your business life is affected already with measurement and how you touch in this kind of space technically. Sebastian. Yeah. Hi, thanks, Jörg. Hi, everyone. So my name is Sebastian. I work for Google. I'm part of Google's uh, team that works with advertising trade bodies in EMEA. We have colleagues in all major markets that manage the relationships with the trade bodies and to make sure that we are engaged as we possibly can as Google. And I'm working across the region on the issue of privacy. So uh, along with my job title, I'm pretty much um, dealing with privacy topics and measurement um, on a regular basis. And I think it's super important, not only like for, for me, but I think for the whole industry. Because as you rightfully said, uh, there's a huge focus on addressability, targeting. And sometimes I feel like measurement is a um, little bit behind. And it's, from my perspective, Businesses are on a huge pressure to drive profitability, ROI, and the more they do this, the more important becomes uh, measurement, and that's why it's um, great to have this conversation today. Thank you. Manuela. Manuela Moser. Um, I'm responsible for um, the technical account management in the central region, and um, I guess I'm sitting here because I was part of the GPP from the IP Tech Lab and worked on that document, so... Um, when it comes to measurement, I think there are a lot of challenges. I mean, um, not only for privacy, um, given the fact that um, there are so many um, different kind of measurements like audience measurement, um, app delivery measurement, etc. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to this great panel and talk about that. Thank you. My name is Marion Kölling. I'm working for Zender. I run the buy side team in Central Europe for Zender. We are a Microsoft advertising company. And when it comes to yeah, future-proof solutions, actually we talk about them like for two years with our buy-side clients. Um, there are already solutions that can be tested that have been proven that they are an alternative um, to yeah, cookie-based solutions. So that's actually my message today. Um, now is the time to, to test and learn um, and I think even on the panel before, the Matthias uh, was it, I think he said it already, um, it's quite important because now we still have cookies and it's important to, yeah, to now create um, alternatives for brands and also for advertisers, for agencies. Hi, my name's uh, Nick. 
Um, and I work for Integro Ad Science across our programmatic business. Um, and you know, obviously measurement is at the core of everything we do. We work with um, all sides of the ecosystem and work with a number of partners on this panel. Um, and it's about surfacing media quality that drives business outcomes. So very much looking at um, how we can support brands to achieve their goals, how publishers can achieve their goals. Um, and a lot of the data points that we work with are non-PII. So for, for me, um, and to um, your point just now, like the, the cookie isn't the be all and end all. So I'm, I'm kind of keen to kind of surface that in this conversation. Hi, I'm uh, Julia Kühne. I'm working as uh, Head of Privacy on the tech and product side for Axel Springer's um, German news media brand. So it's uh, Bild, Welt, but several others. And I'm responsible for, for the um, execution of um, data privacy requirements into our digital products. So mainly the websites and apps and ensuring a privacy compliant um, tracking and measurement. And of course, the current focus of my work is uh, together with other uh, great colleagues um, developing future models for digital advertising um, to, to, to ensure the advertising in, in the context of all these uh, various challenges around uh, data, privacy, uh, tracking and targeting. So, and um, for me, privacy, um, uh, present uh, uh, measurement is all about like um, yeah how can I say like um, a responsible limited but uh, still effective um, collection and use of, of of data to ensure digital advertising is is the most important pillar for us to finance um, free independent journalism at the, at the end of the day. Thank you very much to all of you for for the introduction and uh, perhaps we first should start with um, with the question of like what I mean you touched already a little bit on this but uh, let's go deeper into the question of like what are the the real key aspects and the scope of measurement in digital advertising uh, today and perhaps also if you, if you could perhaps also add a bit more detail to to the you know to this kind of term uh, privacy preserving I mean what what does it actually mean and uh, what do we need to take into consideration uh, for this uh, I'm not sure who wants to start. Um, yeah, I can start. So privacy preserving measurement, I think if we look at it from on the from bigger picture, it's about using obviously data in a very transparent and a limited way. So it's about using consented first party data. I think the modeling aspect will become more and more important because we will have just um, gaps in our measurement. And it's also important, I think, that we just can't rely just on one technology to replace the third-party cookie because current measurement systems are still mainly based on third-party cookies. So we need to invest probably in multiple solutions to uh, achieve a comprehensive view of measurement. And I think if you look at it now, it's kind of, as we heard many times, it's kind of rethinking measurement, how we approach it, because cookies and also other identifiers um, will go away. So we need to find ways how we can make up for it. And uh, I think it's also a huge opportunity to use technologies that are, have privacy at its core. So there are already existing technologies like differential privacy that can be used, aggregation techniques, but also AI that helps us modeling. And um, that's, um, I think, are quite a few elements that we need to put together to um, keep up with the good measurements that we all need because um, it's so important to be able to have the measurement and performance and then react to changes um, as we see them. Hmm, interesting. I mean, um, when we start with privacy measurement, um, the most important thing from my point of view is um, compliance to the, those different kind of privacy regulations and laws. And it's not just GDPR, we're also talking about CCPA, and also other um, US states are now launching their own regulations. So I think this is the most important thing to consider from the beginning on? Yeah, I think from a buy side perspective, it's quite easy because it starts actually with things like frequency management, um, which is nowadays most mostly based on cookies, but there are other solutions already. Um, and it's, um, yeah, the, the journey goes to like activating first party data in a, in a 
yeah, privacy, safe way, um, and there are more advanced solutions um, uh, that, that clients want to talk about. Um, and in general, yeah, as um, Sebastian said already, solutions are there. It's just a matter of, you know, opening up to be, yeah, to be open and, and test um, things. Um, and that's actually, yeah, the, the most important thing. And people are in general a bit reluctant to uh, change changing systems, um, changing running systems. But um, I think it's, um, yeah, it's it's important to um, to be prepared. It's important to de redefine KPIs um, for advertisers um, and to yeah rethink really the whole system and you know get to a point where not everything needs to be user centric, but more like science-based, AI-based, like Sebastian said. So not like never change a running system? <laughs> <laughs> not really. <laughs> change it. Change it now. <laughs> I mean, to, to, to put it in context, I think we have to think about why we're in this position. Um, and we're in this position because of certain players, perhaps, not thinking about the consumer, but thinking about attribution and thinking about how how can I be um, how can I get the um, how can I get how can I prove that it was my ad that delivered that last click? It's my ad that delivered that, and and chasing the consumer around the internet, and then also um, not related to advertising, but other digital practices that did abuse the privacy of um, consumers which cast a shadow over, sadly, over our, uh, over our industry. Um, so the consumer's at the heart of this, and I think we, we need to be thinking about, okay, um, it, it's going to impact how we measure our campaigns, for sure. Um, it is going to have um, an impact on how we deliver advertising based on old techniques. Um, but really, we need to be thinking about upping our game so the consumer has a better internet experience. Um, and I think we can do that today with, as, as Marion was saying, the technologies kind of already exist. Um, some people argue that 60% of the internet or browse internet, certainly in Europe, is already without a cookie anyway. Um, Safari, Firefox, etc. cetera. Um, and, and there are other signals that we can get which don't necessarily... Um, uh, have to or, or don't pertain to the a user um, or aren't personally identifiable and those signals can range everything from um, the the geo to um, the context and environment of the page um, you know other signals such as time in view ad density all of that becomes super important when 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 um, measuring a campaign and seeing if your campaign's effective and to marion's point right the cookie still is around so what we can do is start to collect um performance data based against and sit, start to look at the correlation between that performance and other signals and then start to build out maybe probabilistic probabilistic models that that do as good a job well and um, i think you raised an important point saying about putting the user first I think this is super critical and I think uh, also the mistrust that we face as an industry um, is also because maybe uh, because we could, we measure basically everything and I think we need to be way clearer about what kind of data is really needed and define really the right KPIs for us as a, as a business So and I think there are individual KPIs so you, you need to be very clear about the, your business objectives and uh, your marketing goals and then you need to probably just try to find measure the data that we have and then also be very clear and transparent to your user to regain this trust and i think this is for us as an industry a great opportunity to regain this trust because digital advertising is seen so many times as really something bad and creepy and now if we like put the user first and just like be very conscious about the data we use and then use additional technologies to make up just like for the limited use of data then i think we can regain the trust of the user, which ultimately I think is also then beneficial for advertisers or, or brands because users prefer to buy brands or be or le read brands that they trust. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point and that's um, mainly what I wanted to add to this discussion. So um, it's 
yeah one one reason um, uh, why this whole system got into trouble when it comes to to compliance and uh, uh, trust is uh, that that yeah there was too much tracking sure from from the system but also from a publisher point of view um there there um, was less less control and less management and um, less restriction um so this has to be improved uh, on, on the publisher side to really um, have a good and clear strategy and management and monitoring um, which vendors are doing what on your site uh, when it comes to tracking your users, right? And uh, w what, is, what is really necessary and um, what, what not and what has to be restricted to, to regain uh, user trust. Mm -hmm. Is that also, I mean, it's interesting and I think it's very important to get the publisher perspective in this because it all starts on, on the publisher side, obviously, the whole journey. Um, I mean, you're touching on that already, but is that also how you see or could you perhaps elaborate a bit how, how publishers, what, what they can do to, um, well, to, to enable more of this kind of privacy-preserving measurement and how can you prepare the ground for that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, one one very important aspect um, I think Marion uh, already um, started to cover it, that is um, that you need to to prepare through um, evaluating new technologies and approaches. Right, um, for example, we are doing a lot of um, POCs and tests and build up knowledge. Um, we um, are looking at um, I don't know like um, uh, server side tracking solutions, tech manager approach. Of course, first-party data strategies. We, we heard a lot of uh, that, um, and um, um, also uh, clean room solutions uh, have been covered in, 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 in several panels. So that's a great and innovative um, solution for 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 handling sensitive user data and um, combining data from different sources in a maximum uh, uh, privacy-friendly way, right? And besides this um, um, really necessary evaluation of new technology and approaches, um, I think yeah, two two points are important here on the publisher side. So um, that you have a well um, configured and monitored. Um, um, like uh, 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 tracking, uh, data tracking and processing, uh, consent management, right? That you manage the vendors on your site, that you uh, really carefully decide um, who's allowed to track what and with, with whom can this data be shared um, and to have an automated uh, monitoring um, to, to, to have full control what happens on your site. And there are possibilities. Um, and um, yeah, that, that needs, yeah, like more publishers need to, to, to jump into these topics, especially this monitoring case. We learned from the market, yeah, a lot of publishers don't know actually um, what's happening on their site. So they implemented a CMP, they um, put on this uh, uh, GVL, um, in most cases the whole GVL, and then, okay, I'm ready. But, but that's not the whole story and um, you need to really work, for example, with, with publisher restrictions that, that are an option that already exists but uh, is, is, is used not so often and um, there needs to be more attention. So it's basically you're saying you are the, the gatekeeper to the trust of, of the consumer uh, and it's your user, your consumer, right? And you yes. have to treat them right, you have to take your responsibility and yeah. Okay. Exactly. So at the end of the day, the user um, who wants to complain because I don't know he saw in this uh, in his ghostery add-on uh, how many vendors are tracking him. Um, of course, the users come to us and uh, complains, not yeah. to anybody uh, uh, out of the chain, right? Yeah. So that's why uh, we are in the responsibility to have a good management control and monitoring here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I got it. So trust is in the center of that. That is where everything starts to be ready for the future. So that seems to be the consensus in here. Uh, perhaps looking more to the to the technical side of things, uh, you see the depreca deprecation. My goodness, I'm going to learn it today, Nick. I'm <laughs> promising. Uh, deprecation of third-party cookies uh, and and restrictions also on on the devices. Um, I mean. 
and also regulations, we touched on that a bit, but what do you think are the, the biggest challenges for the, for, for the current system when it comes down to digital ad uh, measurement? Who I wants mean, to go first? <laughs> <laughs> so my five cents for this are that um, it's getting more and more complex, to be honest, because we don't have only um, websites or um, um, we have in-apps, we have other platforms. So from my point of view, it's very important that um, everybody is prepared to measure um, cross-channel, I would say. Mm -hmm. And this is a really... Um, a real challenge. And I would also say to the publisher, um, I'm always telling that to the publishers, um, with the deprecation of the third party cookie, um, this is maybe um, next year or end of this year, and I don't have the exact date, but you should get next prepared year. before <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> you do, do you have the exact date? I'm not sure. <laughs> well, we said it's next year, but we said, like heard, it's um, not only on us to decide, but uh, I think the objective is still to have the cookie deprecated by sometime next year. And it's really important that everybody, not only the publishers, everybody um, um, in the chain is prepared and not only when it's deprecated, but before that, um, prepare yourself wherever you are yeah. to be really um, compliant then. I mean, if, if you look at the biggest challenges, I think I touched on it. Um, we used to live in a world where kind of all data was fully observable based on cookies and uh, other identifiers. Well, that's not going going away. So um, I think it's now the biggest challenge is to make sure that we still measure what we can measure based on uh, first-party data. But then it's getting also more complicated because um, we need more tools, additional signals to make up for the loss of the, the cookie. So for example, I'll give an example of a tool. We have developed a tool called Consent Mode, which is developed to make up for the loss of missing consent. So that if you're missing conversion data because of missing consent, then Consent Mode is a tool that helps you make up for it because it provides additional signals uh, to the um, conversion modeling. But that's just like uh, another tool that you need to implement which is actually, I think, not too difficult because it's supported by most CMPs. But again, it's uh, more technology that is needed, more signals. So, um, yeah, it's getting a bit more complex. And, um, yeah, there won't be just one technology to replace the cookie. I, but I think that's good because it's going to be more purpose-built. So, but overall, some work to do, but I'm quite optimistic that it's doable. So, I think the biggest challenge is, um, as Sebastian said, um, there are more signals coming in, or maybe not more, but other signals um, and tools that need to like, process these signals uh, on behalf of, of advertisers and agencies. And I think the biggest challenge is to, um, to be open to put work into the whole system um, because it's an effort um, that the agencies and, and the advertisers and the whole industry needs to do. Um, and yeah, to be yeah, to, to just do it um, is maybe it's it's a good thing to get a step back um, and see the whole and the big picture of of the measurement um, and and what I what actually my questions are for the measurement I want to implement. What answers um, do I need? What insights do I want to gain? Um, and then like readjusting the whole system and it needs work from all of us. 100% agree with that. I think for for me, it's it's also about it's also about transparency of those signals. So we should be, if it's non PII, we should be sharing as much information collaboratively as possible, um, so that we can essentially do our jobs and we can start to look at how signals have an impact on business outcomes outside of full transparency. Um, I think it's also, we, there's going to be a challenge around talent and resource. We saw a huge kind of like trend towards um, in-housing because people thought that would be the efficient thing to do. And then I think IEB Europe came out with the Attitudes and Programmatic um, Advertising Survey at um, De Mexico this year. And, and the, the plan to in-house had, that sentiment had dropped and one of the theories around that was just the the the, the cost in talent and resource to in-house quite complex, um, you know, programmatic buying um, meant that it wasn't kind of it, it wasn't really the efficient 
play that they thought it might be. And now we're looking at um, agencies that are looking at a hybrid model. So, you know, it's it's good to talk about, um, uh, you know, using non-PII data signals and knitting lots of different data points together um, and then looking at the correlation with conversions. But you need talented resource to do that. You need data science teams um, and you need, um, you know, insights you need people focused on kind of delivering that and i think i think that's a that's a big challenge is, is having the right talent to do it is it actually i mean will we need to change um the kpis for measurement in the future can we just go on with the existing ones i think we need new ones <laughs> how could they look um, like um, that's a very individual question. Um, every p player has to answer for themselves. I think it's it's not a one-fits-all solution out there. I think it's always, um, and Sebastian said it before, a combination of, of different KPIs, a combination of different uh, measurement options. Um, and yeah, that's, that's actually um, what needs to be done. Um, I think KPIs just... You know, comparing the past to the future is is not the right solution. You need to, like, make a cut at some point, and then really, what I said, like, rethink your whole measurement strategy and build up a new one, come up with a new idea, and also accept the fact that not everything is like it has been before. So I, I think I agree and disagree. <laughs> no, I uh, I disagree because I don't think we need new uh, KPIs because for me. They have always been kind of an individual selection. So I think that doesn't change. And it's just important that businesses are aware what KPIs are important to them. Um, I just came across a recent study by, by Workday, which showed that less than 50% of businesses have KPIs in place to reflect kind of digital revenue. So I think this is alone a concern. And uh, so they need to be clear about the KPIs they set, the, you know, based on the business objectives they have. And then I think it's also I think important to acknowledge that not all conversions or metrics are the same because maybe one customer might be, let's say, worth $100 for your business while the other is just worth $10. So it's uh, about then also finding the right balance between and uh, finding the most valuable customers and then also maybe assigning values to the also micro conversions because they add value to it so i think um this is what needs to be done primarily and not necessarily we don't need necessarily new kpis okay do you I'd think um the existing one are enough but, or do you think there will be also additional one new KPIs? well i mean there are so many kpis already out there so it's kind of hard to say <laughs> if we need a new one. So there are media uh, KPIs, business KPIs. So I, I'm not quite sure. So it's, it's, it's hard to say like which KPIs need to change because um, again, coming back, each company needs to decide for their own what is important to me, what do I want to achieve with my media investment, with my marketing investment. And then they need to, to find um, the right KPIs for it and then um, also yeah, measure it in an in a appropriate way. I would agree with that. I, I think ultimately, um, I would, yeah, I would agree with that. Ultimately, brands are going to want to sell products and services, uh, and and as as um, you know, that's our responsibility um, working in the advertising industry is to ensure that those messages are received by the consumer as well, um, and that they are you know um, delivered appropriately in a in in appropriate environments, um, and, and I th I think. That, that's the bottom line. It's either we're driving awareness or or we're actually driving through the purchase funnel. Um, understanding what role we play in the purchase funnel, that's the bit that's going to get complicated because we're not going to have that ability to track or have a look at the attribution. But what we can start doing is, as Marion said, start testing um, and working with partners. I mean, we've, we've recently done a test with um, Hewlett-Packard um, using context um, and we were able to see that, you know, driving um, through contextual targeting um, using specific techniques, we increased like purchase intent by 14%. So I know people think about context as being boring, but it, but it, but it isn't. It's, it's really about how, how creative can we be in applying these, these techniques. Um, I think sometimes with context, 
we underestimate it because we think of it in a truly linear fashion. We think I'm an auto advertiser, therefore I must, I, I, I'm, I've got a car to sell. I'll, I'll, I'll target the automotive category. Um, and the reality is context is just a vehicle to a consumer. And, you know, I'm, I'm interested in purchasing a car, but I'm also, um, you know, interested in reading the latest news about privacy. Um, uh, there are other ways in which you can target, you, you can target me using context. So I think that's where it's really important to start looking at kind of seed segments and then thinking how those seed segments um, relate, but don't overly duplicate with other segments to then give, um, you know, advertisers an opportunity to actually reach those consumers who are who are going to be engaged and interested um i don't know if the kpis need to change but i think we need to be perhaps give more consideration to um experimenting and being transparent about the role that we've played in in that in the purchasing funnel interesting i mean is it I mean, a couple of answers were also going to, towards uh, changes and limitations, but what about opportunities? Do we see any kind of, of opportunities in, in this change which seems to be inevitable for, for the whole kind of ecosystem? Is there anything we can gain? From a user perspective, definitely. Mm -hmm. From an end user perspective, as Julia said, um, You know, websites are the entry for for the user and whatever we can make more comfortable for users is, is definitely a good step in, into the right direction because uh, to be to be honest still still my point um, when I think of my parents for example they have no clue of why they need to click on a consent banner they you know the normal people out there they they don't know what what this is all about and why they need to you know, um, like enter their consent to anything. So, um, and to make it also like easy for them um, with with their level of knowledge, it's it's important. Um, and that's actually, I think, one of the, the most challenges as well. Um, but yeah, also an opportunity um, to make it more comfortable again. I totally agree with you, Marion. Even my husband is asking me, what is this kind of layer and why do you need to click on it? And it's really tough for me to explain it to him. It, it pays your salary, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, f f for me, I'm totally with, with Marion. Um, so the, I definitely see opportunities here, um, also for publishers. And uh, the, uh, the biggest one is, is, is increasing user trust again, right? And um, when you um, <clears throat> increase user trust, um, into your publishing products again because you have a better control of, of, of data um, a measurement. Um, at the end of the day, um, if, 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 if the user trusts the publisher uh, uh, side, he's more open to, to give consent um, and, and give us the opportunity to, to collect uh, data uh, from him again, right? So when when we manage to to build up trust again then um the the openness to to give consent uh, would be uh, bigger again i think we also see um clear benefits for advertisers when it comes to um like this trust because we uh, just recently did a research with uh, ipsos and unsurprisingly like the answer was that if consumers feel in control and um, about their data and that brands are honest about what data they use and for what they use it, then they have a, like they are more likely to buy from that brand. I think it's like over 70% uh, of consumers prefer to buy from brands that are like trustworthy mm -hmm. and um, yeah, are open about the data they, uh, they use. So I think obviously in the consumer trust element is super important. But I wouldn't underestimate from a brand's perspective also um, the benefits it can have on your on your business. And then I think, sorry, la lastly, it's, uh, I think it's an, uh, for us as an uh, industry also the opportunity to develop uh, re um, like carefully new technologies like AI and how we use them in our products to really establish and maintain the hopefully new one user trust. Yeah, advertiser and brands are a really good um, word in this um, discussion because we were a lot of talking about users, 
but those advertisers and brands are spending a lot of money um, for delivering campaigns, so they also need to have trust to the systems. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, we're getting closer to the end, but still I want to raise one or open up one topic we didn't touch upon yet is uh, omnichannel. I mean, uh, mostly talking about basically the classical display ads, uh, but what about you know omnichannel? How can we with the growing pressure we have, you know, with this kind of new challenges ahead, uh, even even solve the more complex kind of uh, question to effectively measure omni-channel campaigns. Any any ideas? It will be hard, like <laughs> it was in the past already, yep. um, because there are always like um, systems that um, that are not measurable. Or, um, but in general, I, I think. Um, Every system who's uh, like open and um, uh, prefers like the open internet um, should, yeah, be be open to uh, these new kind of standards we need to establish. Actually, but um, it won't get easier in the future. I think that's key. Actually, is having standardization across channels, um, and and if if we. For, ex for example, if we if we say that it's it's important, MRC for example say that you know for something to be viewable, it needs to be in view for fifty percent in view for a second. Then, how does that translate on other? How does that translate when you're walking past a digital out of home board? How does that translate when you're um, you know watching CTV versus linear? How does, you know, and I, th I think that's where it, to get, have true omni-channel measurement, we need to kind of agree what what quality is have some acceptance around what quality is um, and then you know have that standard set whether it's an index across everything i don't know um i'm certainly not technical but what, what i do know is that you know it's it's standards that drives adoption and it's a lack of standards that creates confusion and i think that's the that's the the, the barrier to barrier to omni-channel measurement um the the the, the, the solution isn't one provider um, owning everything, the, the solution is a, a, a totally open ecosystem. So marketers can kind of choose to um, advertise where they where they want, um, but with the technology to kind of deliver um, measurement effectively. Well, I th well, we totally agree on the importance of omnichannel measurement. I think we as Google, for example, we make all our YouTube campaign data available via um, our clean room solution at State Hub to which Integra Ad Science, by the way, is a certified partner. So we try to make sure that um, we make this data available. And I think there are currently a lot of um, conversations ongoing how cross-media measurement uh, looks like. I think we just, like, not uh, two weeks ago, we published a POV from a YouTube perspective, how cross-media measurement could look like um, and uh, should approach. And we touched on, like, agreeing on, like, the right standards, how to collect data in a privacy-centric way. So I think we as an industry need to agree on this, but I think from an omnichannel perspective, I would like to add one more element, maybe because we heard a, like, in the panel earlier on, on uh, retail media that on Media Mark Saturn, for example, they said 80% search online, but 70% buy offline. So I think uh, also having measurement systems and infrastructure in place that support both online and offline um, will become even more important as the, like, the two worlds grow together. So. I think we should not only think about omnichannel from a pure digital perspective, but also more from a like really online, online perspective going forward. Makes sense. Um, yeah, before we come into the, the questions, and there have been a couple of questions also from the audience. Thank you uh, for that. Um, perhaps we, we should also, you know, provide a full picture, uh, which also should look into the future. So from your perspective, how, how should measurement look like in the future uh, for an advertiser? What, what should they plan for? How should they build it on, on the end? Or what could they use? I think, um, as we said before, it needs um, a combination of different measurement solutions. I think for each advertiser to decide which ones um, are useful for their individual needs. And that's actually, I think, the future. And um, as I said earlier, um, these solutions are already in place, so they can be used immediately with one or two clicks in, in our platforms. It's it's available, it just needs time and resources and 
like the right mindset to to test it. So the tools are there, but they need to be activated, yeah. and that, that yeah, it's, exactly. it's missing activation at the end of the day. I mean, there are already advertisers using those solutions, but it's not the the very broad majority. I would say. Mm -hmm. I think it's about quickly preserving existing measurement with uh, consented first-party data and a uh, good tagging strategy, making sure that it kind of supports online and offline, so as, a, as the foundation. And then uh, moving forward, I think uh, probably we need more data um, sources to have a comprehensive view, like CRM data, loyalty programs, and, and, and everything. Then we need like additional tools. We mentioned already something like, for example, a consent mode or enhanced conversion, another tool that increases the ob amount of observable data. And then um, also making sure that we have the right um, KPIs in place. Anything else to add from Marion, Julia, uh, excuse me, uh, Manuela and, and Julia? Should I start? So, um, yeah, uh, what came into my mind, uh, what can I add? So, maybe, um, yeah, because you asked uh, in the focus of advertisers, um, I think, um, yeah, data clean rooms to match data from different sources, um, privacy friendly. So, so then we would still be able to, to have a very good targeting probably even better than today because we have even more data sources mm -hmm. um, but nobody has the complete user profiles and data right so that's a really really good approach for for all players within the system yeah I think there's nothing more to add to be honest so everything is said so we have a comprehensive plan in place. <laughs> Perfect. Unfortunately, we have a recording, so <laughs> people can look it up. I have a couple of questions from the audience. Um, and yeah, just like to bring it up uh, as we have some minutes left. Uh, first question would be for you. Um, you mentioned the consent, Google consent mode. Uh, the question was, and actually a couple of people rated, uh, voted for that. Uh, is that compliant f with GDPR and TCF 2.0? Yeah, good question. Um, no, but obviously we wouldn't be, uh, be offering any solutions where we think they won't be um, uh, complying with uh, local uh, regulations. So with content mode, there are um, several um, setups that you can choose. There's like the basic um, setup, for example, that only like sends this network ping that is required for the, for the modeling when the user gave consent, so kind of a consented-only version. And then there's the full uh, version that uh, you can, can also implement, and then it's uh, on you to decide with your kind of legal team which uh, version you feel comfortable. Obviously, we, uh, we think both are, are compliant. That's, otherwise, we wouldn't be offering it. Yeah, perfect. Very good, and uh, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with that. So it's it's indeed available. Uh, then the question for you, Nick. Uh, you suggested improving customer experience and uh, using variety of signals for probabilistic models. How would you measure customers' attention in this sea of signals? That's a really good question. Um, ooh. <laughs> Machine I, learning, I, artificial intelligence is all. Yeah, so... That's a joker. <laughs> <laughs> AI, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're kind, of, we're kind of already doing that today um, with one of our products. So where we are working with... Um, we have a product called Total Visibility that enables us to... Um, if a client consents to sharing their DSPQ logs with us, we see impression level um, cost data. We then marry that with um, the media quality data that we have. Then that gives us an, a, a, the ability to start kind of having a look at, um, let's say, context as a flag in the sand, looking at how certain different types of context correlate with different types of performance, and then start making recommendations about what's, what segments we should be targeting on a performance basis. Um, it's not So I would argue that that's good for the consumer because what we're not doing is basing it on like any data that we've collected on the consumer themselves. Um, what, what we are doing is we're looking at the relationship that the, the environment um, and other quality signals have with um, performance. Obviously, th those performance or conversion metrics are based on a cookie of sorts. So it, we're, we're having to do the learning now. Um, uh, but 
that's that seems to be working for us that's how that's how we're doing it at the moment i'm and i'm sure that's going to evolve i mean i think for me the future is it will need to be real-time signaling um as opposed to kind of looking at past data um and i think the other thing to bear in mind right is that when we look at cookies we we over rely on 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 a, on a methodology that wasn't ac particularly accurate anyway um and some cookies were up to 90 days if not longer uh, old you know um so I think moving to uh, moving to real time signaling is probably the, the the future. Cool, yeah. Thank you. And with that, we are already at at the end. Unfortunately, uh, time went on and passed on quicker than than expected. To be honest, thank you very much uh, to you panelists, and thank you very much uh, to the audience for listening and also bring up some questions. Unfortunately, we couldn't answer all of them, but uh, we are still around. I think you can also ask directly or connect on LinkedIn and uh, yeah with that I'm um, thank you all and uh, hope you have a great rest of the 3 con and then we seeing each other next week bye